Hello, everybody. I'm Paul um, for Citrix on the Zen server or Citrix hypervisor on the on the tool stack side, which is the control control the control plane, and I'm talking about the adding TLS verification to to the to this product and the history that got us here within the evolution. So uh, Zen server is a distributed uh, system that offers uh, resources to VMs and it's based on Zen and the Zappi project. It has some advanced features like uh, use, giving access to the NVIDIA virtual GPUs to, to the VMs and GPS to clustering. And one very important thing with the distributed system is having uh, secure pool communications. And this is done through the XML RPC protocol uh, using over HTTPS. So the, we, uh, the, the connections are established are on the both, both ends. Yet when they get established, there's, we have the um, clients get verified by the server using a shared secret password, but the the, the client doesn't try to verify the server, so it might uh, establish a connection to to a to an unknown uh, server, and that's a security problem because once they have the, the shared secret, they can access all your system, which is something that we really do not want. So, in the beginning, in 2016, we to establish these uh, TLS connections. On before they had also SSL P3 connections. We used uh, STANO, which is, a, which is a, a program which basically acts as a proxy from an, H, from an HTTP for that, the, that Zappi creates, the HTTP server, and the other, to the other end on the other host, we have two STANOs creating the, the, the secure connection. Then uh, for, for one feature that we wanted to do, which is the Having a VM that actually load balances uh, the VMs, uh, depending on the on the metrics that that we report on, for example, how loaded the, um, the server are, checking the CPUs and memories, and for that we need uh, Zappi to establish a connection to to that VM to that appliance, and that, to do that we really need to to, to do less, um, because it's an external connection. We added support for users to to. To install trusted certificates, root certificates to mm -hmm. be able to establish that connection, the external connection, and that was added on late 2008. On 2012, we we added a um, mutual certificate verification, which is the, the goal that we we did here, but it was only done for for certification purposes. So it was done because it was only done for certification. It was not a complete solution. We, uh, we had a way to, to allow users to do it, but it was all manual. They had to copy files. It was really uh, very not, it was very awkward to use. And in 2012, uh, we, we added this, the capability to finally install these certificates and remove all this manual, uh, all this manual work and be able to install it through the API, which makes it uh, very easy and which uh, unlocks us to, to, to do all this. So when it, the work in 2020, the work that I, uh, I learned about the certificates, TLS, et cetera, we actually added some checks for, for the private keys, for example, and do some checks on the on the trust routes and the trust chains of the certificates that the TLS certificates, which uh, helped me to in the in the end in twenty. Sorry, no, yeah, this is the we had the first try that's in twenty eighteen for to add this the, um, the certificate checking, but it did not come to fruition unfortunately. And it was planned for 2019, but I don't know the reasons, but it was, I think, lack of resources. And it was, the decision was to be left um, the product as it was before for the CC certification. 
So what the, the plan was to, to add a pool to act as a CA, to add a CA. So basically we would add some, some mechanism here to, to sign certificates for, for the host certificates that they, that they display to the, to the, to the clients. And so what the, me the mechanisms basically is that they share this, this certificate, this private key, and they, so they sign their own certificates and they all have this trust route, this certificate where they sign each other the certificates. And that's how the trust route um, gets established and they, they trust each other. Uh, they, there was also some plans to, to maintain the, uh, the revoked certificates the list to be able to to know which in the case where some certificates got revoked to just uh, not use it but uh, there's it was quite uh, not quite done and it missed some some things like the WB what happened with it or for example how to do certificate cycling and how to replicate the actual certificates because the, the private certificate the root certificate there's no I mean once we have the case where a join gets removed from the pool, we still get the, the private key. What happens with that? How to how to re, how to cycle this private key? So finally, we got time in twenty twenty to start uh, doing a new design, and what we did was drop the, the CA plan, and we what we wanted to do is uh, just try to use the, the certificates, the current certificates, as a way to, to, to trust each other without having any sort of change if we could enable it. But because we did allow in the, in the CC mode the, the users to install certificates, this means that we had to support these two kinds of modes of operations one using that simple one using the self-signed certificate that come by default in the, in the host. And the other one was trying to make it compatible with the user install certificates. And the problem that this causes is the user install certificates use the, as a subject, they use the host names. And that means that we have to change the way the connections are established between the hosts because usually they are done IPs with IPs, but if we want to be compatible with these certificates that use host names, we have to establish the connection using host names, not IPs. And that means we had to, to change quite a bit the, um, the, the framework or how the connections were made. And it also uh, forces us to, put, um, to be dependent on, on DNS. And that is yet an unsecured uh, protocol which is really not what we want. We want something that it's more stable. So what's happened is like in seven months, I was learning about more how to do this and experiment and yeah, trying to learn. And then we did three months of development where we could see that things were ramping up, and were getting very complicated. So the beginning of 2021, a uh, partner of mine, Christian, Christian Ling, some I think he was doing some related work and he found about the SNI part of the TLS protocol, and that is the, um, the server name indicator, which allows the server, depending on the request of the, the client, to serve one to, to decide which which certificate, which host certificate to provide, usually depending on the host name. Here, we do not use, because it's not these servers are not exposed to the, the public internet, we do not, uh, we are using we're going to use it in a different way because we don't really have host names, but it can be exploited to, to still decide which, which certificate to give. And the way it's done on the pool operations, we add to the, to the external, the, the client configuration to add uh, the, the host to, to request for a host called Zappi, Zappi pool, which is a uh, static but still works for us because the rest of the API clients do not need to know, um, do not need to know about this and they will still get the full certificate that the user installed. And uh, this also allow us to have the, the subjects for the, for the certificates used for pool operations to be static and have the host UAD which decided at its all time and plus a serial number. This is because uh, 
we saw some problems with this tunnel. If we do not have a serial number, they were not replacing uh, the certificate with, when we told it to please reload the certificates. So this, I think it was one week, two weeks of prototyping, one week of changing the design and then seven months of development that we ended up, I think, around September of last year, week, uh, a year ago already, when we actually enable the TLS verification by default on all installations, on all new installations. <clears throat> so the, I think that one, one of the, the critical parts of the of this work was trying to to all, to never break communications. And the most critical part where things can, can go wrong is when the, the keys are exchanged, the public keys are exchanged for the servers to trust each other. And we made it so that uh, exchanging certificates in all the process, even if it's interrupted, it's not going to break operations. Mm -hmm. And instead, we like to generate the certificates. We distribute that. Then we reload all the uh, tunnel servers to, to, to provide to change the, the certificate provided. And the very end, we can delete uh, the previous certificates and we clean up the, the file system. And basically, it means that the old, um, that the old certificate is invalidated because it's not not going to be used anymore, it doesn't exist. So other critical part is on the pool join when 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 new uh, when new host joined the pool, it has uh, some special operations basically it's when the trust is established. And the way we, we decided to go is basically at the very beginning there is um, there's a connection being made and some checks being made and this is done it's not the connection to the server, so the joiner makes the connection to the pool, and that connection is not being validated at that moment. It's just on the basis of this is the first time that it's being set up. We just trust it. Um, on we just trust the um, yeah the network, but as soon as we have the pre-checks and the certificates are exchanged, we switch to um to a trusted connection to a verified connection where we done. And then we do the, the normal proceedings of the pool join, where we uh, replicate the SRs, uh, the, the storage, we set up the storage and we set up everything else. And yeah, the beginning of the, of the, of the process, the joiner is forced to restart, and then it, it restarts as, as, the, as just a pool member, where everything is being set, has been set up, all the certificates, and and usually it just works. In some cases, however, there, there are multiple joints that uh, are being held in parallel. We might have missed one of the one of the certificates that the other joiners were exchanged. So when, then we forced to um, this to, to download all the certificates that the pool has. So in case that means we're not going to get uh, the connection interrupted. And uh, because uh, Enabling the all this, this certificate exchange can we don't want it to go wrong, basically. Then it so to be able to enable this uh, this new operation, the certificates need to be exchanged, and in some cases that it might be might, might be dangerous to do. In one of the cases on the pool upgrade, because we upgrade one host by one, that means that uh, the first host to be updated is going to be the coordinator, which has the, the database, and the rest of the members of the pool will not have uh, generated certificates. So that means that until all the, the hosts are updated, we cannot uh, switch it on. And the other uh, occasion where it's just dangerous to try to do enable it is when HA is enabled, which is a mode where hosts, when they have bad connections, for example, they might fence, they might restart, and we do not want to put uh, the pool in such situation. So instead, we decided to to make the ones to to let the user once they are ready that they know there is no operations going on, they can enable the TLS TLS verifications, which will do the the exchange and then enable it. So. This exchange, uh, we do some, some checks on it just to make sure before everything is enabled that it actually works. And we do N squared connections between all. So we check the connectivity between absolutely all the hosts in both ways to make sure that everything is okay before actually enabling it. 
So one thing when, when doing the coding that was not in the design was basically how to track down all the user, all the usages of when we actually made connections to another server, how to, to make sure that there are no unverified connections, unverified usages, because our code base, I think it's more than 400,000 lines of code. So it's uh, not that easy to, to handle down. So what we did is using the camel type system, change the change the, the library that generates the the external connection, the external configuration, and does the, the external connections, and uh, change it. So there is a variant that allows us to choose whether there is no verification going on, or there is external verification, or there's a there's a pull verification. And uh, Camel helps here a lot, uh, trying to, to just giving compiler errors and type errors to try to find all the all the cases where this was happening. We could, I found quite a few unexpected places where this was happening. So I was yeah very glad that uh, we used the Camel here to 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 fix this problem. And then we added a quality gate in the CI that counts the usages of 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 the verified connections, so we can handle them down and, and reduce them to zero. And uh, to support this, we to support this, this use case to have it more complete. What we did is uh, before the the twenty twenty in the twenty twenty change that I mentioned about installing nicely the certificates. We added some the user install certificates to the database, so they are exposed to the user and they can see the thumbprints, uh, the public thumbprints. And with this work, what we did is add all the the rest of the certificates that are installed in the in the host. This is like self time certificates and uh, trusted certificates, all to be exposed through the API, through the GUIs that use the API and the CLI. Then we also allow the certificate checking to be disabled in some emergencies, so it can be recovered from if there is a problem. I don't think we've ever had to use it, and I think this we've had done quite a good work doing the testing, rollout testing, and forcing. For example, one thing we were quite worried about were the certificate exchange. So on the internal testing, what we need on normal tests mm -hmm. is force it to repeat every single hour. To try to force it uh, to force out the errors. I think we found two or three and fixed them. And after that, it, we felt very confident that everything was working fine. There were also work about uh, showing up alerts about fail logins, trying to count all the, the logging, fail logins where they come from and expose the IPs so users can see if they are being attacked, for example, and what's, uh, what could be the problem here. And then after the work uh, for this work was done. What we we had to to integrate the clustering daemon because it has its own network for network to themselves, like on all the hosts, and that uh, we did I think six months more of work to try to make it work. I think there were two two, des two designs. The first one didn't quite work quite right. It was too complicated using its own certificates, and what we ended up doing was. Um, was actually using the certificates be used for pull communication, use them for the cluster as well. And being able to reload the, the certificates that this was using, which is not using a tunnel. So that forced us to, to put some mobs in libraries in OCaml to, to actually make use of this while, while not uh, shutting down the daemon and doing what it's for, uh, running. So for future work, there's a, uh, there's uh, still, uh, the verification is not done everywhere, unfortunately, on one particular case where that is not done is when the CLI that we have is able to, to launch remote requests to, to other servers that are not the local one. And in that case, there is no verification being done. So we would like to have a trust and first use um, verification, but that is not quite yet. And we also, Really like, like to just to use HTTPS for everything. There are some places where HTTP is still used, and we could put the channel there. One one is the VM migrations inside the pool. It should not be too hard. I think Rob has done work and has a working prototype already. Then there is the cross pool migrations, which need to use which 
they, these two these two hosts are in separate uh, pools. They need to exchange the certificates. We have methods of doing that to, tra to transfer the metadata, and actually the client that actually initiates the connection we have the time that can can provide these certificates to initiate the, the connection. So there is no inherent um, trust being done between the two servers, all very explicit. And with VM importing and exporting, we've seen that uh, some of the imports, for example, are HTTP only, and we would like to try to use HTTPS and disable this HTTP one. And any, any questions at all? All right, doesn't look like there are any questions. No, thank you very much.